days is looking for a quick fix. Everybody moans and prays for a magic trick fix. Cast your spell, wave your wand, make my wish come true. But they seldom look beyond. To then what will they do? Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to Every Version Ever. Today I'm joined by my friend Mark Brown, and we're talking about an actual Disney remake this time. Sort of. Today we're talking about the movie Geppetto, starring Drew Carey of all people, which was a made-for-TV film from the wonderful world of Disney on ABC in 2000. This was the series that I could have sworn the Jonathan Taylor Thomas version was from. However, after learning of this film's existence, maybe my brain somehow confused the two? I don't know. All I know is that I had never seen this movie before watching it for the podcast. I think I'd heard of it, but I had never seen it, and I had no idea what I was in for. Geppetto is a film about Geppetto, obviously, but it's unique among the other Pinocchio films I've covered so far in that Pinocchio is not the main character. This film is the story of Pinocchio, but it's told entirely from the perspective of Geppetto. When Pinocchio runs away, you don't follow him, you follow Geppetto as he searches for him. And despite borrowing a lot of things directly from Disney's original 1941 version, this one also goes in its own direction in a lot of ways. Whether or not that's a good thing is entirely subjective, as you will see when we get into this episode. Okay. What was this movie? <laughs> I feel this might be an interesting podcast. I feel you and I might have different opinions on it. <laughs> so this, this should be interesting. <laughs> Since you suggested it, I'm assuming that you liked it. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I did like it when I first saw it, I went, um, which was, I don't know, years ago. Were but you a kid? Billy, no, I wasn't. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say, this feels like a movie that a little kid would like and then they would like it by default when they grew up, just because nostalgia. Because nostalgia, no. And believe it or not, I actually like it a lot more on this second on the second <laughs> rewatch. So yeah, you and I are gonna have um, a very different views on today. <laughs> I think so. This this might be my least favorite Pinocchio that I've watched. Oh wow, that, that, <laughs> that's a big statement. <laughs> Sheesh. Not not because like it, there was so much in it that it was like. It had so much potential. Yeah. <laughs> and it was squandered by so many things. And I guess we'll get into those details too, yeah. I, I guess this isn't quite as bad as, like, the animated, the Russian Pinocchio, the one with the father, you know, the, <laughs> the, the meme one. I guess, it's not that bad. I haven't seen that one, but I would hope not. I think it was just the fact that, like, it felt like it had something uh-huh. And they didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I guess the question, well, I, I don't know if I should ask you this now. We're at the end of our podcast. Between Geppetto and Disney's Pinocchio live action remake, which do you think is better? <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I have to stop and think. <laughs> That's just <laughs> tell you something. <laughs> Yeah, folks, if you're listening, this is going to be a very interesting <laughs> podcast today. <laughs> I guess uh, this one is better because, like I said, it felt like they had something. Mm-hmm. Like, if I if I had to re-watch one, I would choose this one. Okay. But, like, Drew Carey was... <laughs> they, they needed somebody else. Like, I like Drew Carey. He was wrong for this part. <laughs> He felt so that. out of place. Like, uh, you know, I'm a fan. Like, I, I enjoy, you know, the movie and the cast, including Drew Carey. But, um, you know, I was reading online. I don't know how true this is, but originally this was supposed to be a, a like a comeback film for, well, not a comeback, but like a re- reuniting between Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke. I, I read Dick that. Van Dyke was going to be Geppetto and Julie Andrews, I guess, was going to be the fairy. And that know, would have been I, amazing. Exactly. Like, like I, I have no problem with Julia Louis Dreyfus or Drew Carey, but yeah, that I will agree that is a big <laughs> downgrade. Yeah. Van Dyke and Julie Andrews to Drew Carey and Julia Louis Dreyfus. When when I read that, I was like, 
oh wow this could have been so good Mm because like i didn't love all of the music but it was like it had potential like most of the rest of the movie it had potential and it was just i think the performances of the music is what i didn't care for Mm -hmm. drew carey was just he was so flat he didn't feel like he was delivering any of his lines with any real conviction like he didn't feel real (laughs) he this felt this felt like it was a parody of Pinocchio that wasn't funny. <laughs> and I guess I'm trying to think besides like, you know, like his Drew Carey show and who was lines anyway, uh, Drew Carey doesn't really act a lot in. No. In and I like, think the only other thing I, I can think, think of is robots. Why. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> I I'm like sorry. him. Like I, yeah. I like him. And who, li- whose line is it anyway? He's hilarious. Uh-huh. That show is a great idea. Like all yes. those comedians are great together, mm-hmm. but it somehow does not translate well into a fairy tale. And maybe that, maybe this was supposed to be something like that. Like it was supposed to be hilarious, but I don't know. I, like I don't I, know. It. I couldn't figure out what it was supposed to be. Like was it I, supposed to be sincere? Because it didn't feel sincere. <laughs> But it also didn't feel funny. I don't think it was meant to be funny or parody at all. I, I think it was meant to be sincere and touching. But I guess that that, that didn't that didn't show its showcase uh, its potential to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess um, had you heard of this film before I mentioned it or no? I had heard the title, but I didn't okay. know anything about it other than Drew Carey was in it. I don't think I even knew that Julia Louis-Dreyfus was in it until I started looking into it for this podcast. I think the way I discovered about it was, like you, I'm a big fan of Whose Line Is It Anyway, um, both the original British version and the original American version with Drew Carey. But um, so like in some of the games, they would kind of reference this movie Geppetto and like make fun of Drew. So I think that's what brought it to my attention. It's like, well, what is this Geppetto? And I like, go, oh, wait, Drew Carey acted in a movie called Geppetto. And I guess eventually I, I don't know what made me watch it. I think I was just on YouTube look, trying to find free movies to watch and I came across that. Yeah. It's it's like, I don't really know what to think about this movie. <laughs> like, I think I, th- I think I was expecting something totally different. I think I was expecting something more along the lines of the Jonathan Taylor Thomas version, because I think I haven't seen that. Yeah. I think that this one, this is probably what I thought the Jonathan Taylor Thomas one mm-hmm. was because for for years I thought the Jonathan Taylor Thomas version of Pinocchio was a made for TV Disney movie. And I think that maybe I somehow mixed it up with this one even though I've never seen this. Was the Jonathan Taylor Thomas one a theatrical movie or TV? Yeah. It was okay, it was well. theatrical. And I think I just thought that this one was going to just be along the same lines as that one. And it definitely wasn't like that one was that one was definitely sincere. It was kind of goofy in places, but better acted. They had a a better cast for what they were trying to do. I think I just went into this with the wrong expectations. (laughs) Yeah, I think if you went in expecting it, you know, made for TV (laughs) budget. I should have been expecting that because I knew it was made for TV. Yeah. Maybe you liked it better, but but I don't think you're in the you're in the minority. I think a lot of people do agree with you that the it's generally not you know well liked or well remembered or people who do like it like it for nostalgia. But like I'm on the other fence. Like I I just I sincerely think this is way better than Robert Zemeckis's version, <laughs> and I I would recommend people to watch this instead of that if I had to pick one. <laughs> well, I guess I suppose I would too. Yeah. But for, like I said, no, I had to think no, about it. it. Was me. <laughs> <laughs> like there's really one, we'll get to it eventually, but there's really, I really only have like one big criticism with this movie and we, we'll get to it at the end. But um, okay. besides that overall, I, I do like it. Like it, it's, I do find it sincere. I do find it touching. I, I enjoy all the songs. To me, this is one of Steven Schwartz's best work that he's ever done for a film. Like, I think this is like, he gave like a theatrical budget musical soundtrack in this TV film. I think this is better than maybe even something he did theatrically like Pocahontas 
which may be a very shocking confession. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would go that far. I do think that the soundtrack is probably the standout thing of this. It just needed a better cast to sing it. Okay, yeah, maybe uh, I can go luck, but I, I do think, uh, yeah, I, I love the lyrics. I think this is some of the best lyrics I've ever heard from Stephen Schwartz in a long time. There I mean, were some great lyrics. Time, but there were some great yes. lyrics, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think maybe that's, like you said, I, I would agree with you, that's the main, the biggest, best thing of this movie is its music and lyrics. I did find it interesting, though, that, well, I think that I'm not alone in that opinion because apparently they've taken this and turned it into a stage musical. Correct. Yeah. So p- other people apparently liked the soundtrack enough to divorce it from the movie yeah. <laughs> and turn it into another thing. <laughs> I think they changed the name. I think it's called like My Son Pinocchio or something like that. Something like that. Let me look it yeah. up. Disney's My Son Pinocchio, Geppetto's Musical Tale. Yeah. That's a, that just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, it, they should have just gone with my son, Pinocchio. Yeah. It would have been a lot better. I will give Drew Carey props because he he did take singing lessons for this movie. And I will say, I think he he did the best he could singing the songs that he had to sing. I would say that. I could tell he was doing the best he could. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's not to say too much for <laughs> depending on how you're looking at it. Uh, he wasn't bad. He, no, I, he, he's just not a he's not cut out for a full on musical. I guess I would say his singing impressed me. He was better than what I thought it would be. Okay. I guess I could go with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be such a such a divided podcast to our listeners. <laughs> Put it in the comments below. Hashtag Team Jonathan and hashtag Team Mark. <laughs> Which side do you agree with? <laughs> and I guess this was this was around the same time. I guess he was filming Who's Lying because, like, he did some singing games in Who's Lying, and he could you could tell that his singing was as good there as it was here too. Mm. Which again, you know, <laughs> make of that what you will. Apparently, it was also the same time as he did. He was doing the Drew Carey show because apparently there was uh, an episode with Pinocchio in a cameo. <laughs> like they did, like promote the film or something. Sort of. They had apparently they would occasionally do some kind of a hidden things episode. Like the the episode is called "What's okay, Wrong okay. with This Episode 3. So they would like yeah, hide okay. things in the episode for people to find, and just weird things would happen. And at one point, Pinocchio came in. And there was like a little scene between the two, briefly. Like it was a brief cameo. Mm-hmm. Drew Carey was a busy man in the nineties. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, the price is right. He's he's set for life. <laughs> yes, yes. I thought it was also interesting too. The kid who plays Pinocchio, Seth Adkins, between this movie and his cameo on the Drew Carey show, and. He had one other role as Pinocchio. He apparently played Pinocchio in one of the Kingdom Hearts games. I think I read that too, yeah. Which I thought was interesting. Yeah, I guess... <laughs> I guess Pinocchio is not a character that Disney like, showcases much in any sort of medium at the moment, so I guess there is no like, you know, current voice of the mm-hmm. Pinocchio character, so I guess might as well use him since he was around the same time. Yeah, well, maybe they were, they were hoping this film would be a hit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would assume that they were wanting that. Yeah, I guess. Like, but with with the fact that it's not even on Disney Plus, makes me think that even they realized that it could have been better. <laughs> or they they probably just don't even remember this film. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> we did a what <laughs> with Drew Carey. <laughs> <laughs> You've been working too many long hours, Hank. <laughs> so what do you think of the cast besides Drew, I guess? Most of them were fine. Yeah. And that's probably the best I can say about most of them. I don't think there was anyone that really stood out as, like, amazing. Some were like- maybe better than average. <laughs> um, Like, the... Let's see if I can find the character's name. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to pronounce it. Professor Buon Ragazzo. Yes. <laughs> yes, I know we're thinking of the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> he was really good, Renny Albers. You know, I, I thought he did a good job as that character. Yes, he was good. I guess and, 
the the guy <laughs> the coachman or the ringmaster or whatever played by Usher he was good in his part too it was weird but good he doesn't I don't think I don't remember did he have any speaking lines or was it just a song <laughs> it might have just been a song <laughs> But I like I don't know was Usher like I, I don't follow modern music that much but was Usher big in two thousands was that why they got him probably I'm, like I, I thought it was fine I had no problem with him but I'm just wondering that's a that's an interesting choice it was a very interesting choice yes. it was like what is going on <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him that young anyway yeah, yeah no I. I like I'm not super familiar with Usher. I know who he is, yeah. but mm-hmm. I'm not like a huge Usher fan. Yeah. I like Ben Spiner a lot as Stromboli. Yeah, he was he was fine, but also again, very weird. Like I wasn't <laughs> sure what they were going for with his character. Was he supposed to just be insane? <laughs> it's a different take, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess they were the best. I, I like Brent Spiner, Rene Albers Renoir, and those are the two that stand out if I had to rank the best. I guess Ju- Julia would be straight first. Like, I guess to me, if I had to pick the worst cast, it would probably be her. I I don't feel there was anything about her Blue Fairy character that was like something special that she had to bring to the character or anything. The only thing that she brought to the character was herself. <laughs> it was a weird take on the character. Like, I, I guess it was fine for what it was supposed to be, but like... Why did she have an accent and literally nobody else other than the bad guy had an accent? Like, yeah. <laughs> that was a weird choice. And the way she talked beyond just the accent just seemed kind of weird. I think she was supposed to be doing an impression of the original Blue Fairy from the Disney film. Maybe. But she wasn't doing a very good job of it. <laughs> she did a very good impression. <laughs> That's this movie. They're trying their best, but it's not that good. <laughs> yeah. I guess Seth, uh, Seth Adkins, I guess I wasn't that impressed with him. He's a kid, so I mean, I can't... Not, I can't. Hold I was going to say that. he was one of the better yeah. ones. <laughs> <laughs> the only other actor that really stood out was the school teacher, Signora Giovanni, and she was only a cameo, and it was Anna Gasteyer, which I just because I like her, and, and she yeah. was only in there for like Two minutes max. Yeah, I tell, I forgot about her until you mentioned. <laughs> I, I, I I don't blame you. I she, I only noticed her because I like her. Not that I've seen her in a lot of things. I but she was in one of my like I I end up liking a lot of shows that get canceled. <laughs> and she was in a show called People of Earth. It lasted two seasons. It was renewed for three, and then it was canceled while the third season was in production. So I'm still mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we complain to about this? And then she was also in a Netflix show called Lady Dynamite with Maria Bamford, which I also love Maria Bamford. So but those two yeah. shows were like on at the same time. So she's kind of stuck in my head probably because of she's those high two up shows. On your, on your list, yeah. Even though I haven't really seen her since then. <laughs> I think I think one thing I read, one of the the kid that Pinocchio like gets in a fight with near the beginning of the movie he's played by anton yelchin yeah i saw that i I didn't see which kid he played but i saw that anton yelchin was in the movie as one of the school kids Mm -hmm. yeah he was the one that would beat it up and now that when i think back to it i could see uh, oh yeah that is that he does look like him Mm -hmm. so i guess he's one of those that made he he had a good career up until his sad death yeah Wayne Brady, you're like, again, I... <laughs> that one came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I felt the same way about him as I did with Drew Carey, even though he had a much shorter role. Yeah, that was like, that was like a couple seconds cameo. He one brief reprise of the song, and that was it. Was he like an actual person, or was he just conjured up by the Blue Fairy? I mean, we should probably save that till we get there in the movie, but I was confused <laughs> about what he was. <laughs> The way I, I guess what I thought is like she, he's a guy the fairy enlisted the help of. So I don't think like she conjured him up, but I think she might have just paid him. <laughs> okay. Well, I suppose we can start at the beginning. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Let's get to the beginning. <laughs> I guess for those who don't know, this is a. It's not really a Pinocchio story. It's it's a Geppetto story. It's told from Geppetto's point of view. 
Yeah, Pinocchio comes in and out of the story. You follow Geppetto as he's basically trying to find Pinocchio. Because, like, as happens in the book and in most versions, Pinocchio runs away from home and Geppetto is either trying to find him or living by himself. Or, like, uh, that Pinocchio movie we, we did the other day, uh, The Emperor of the Night, he, he just you just forget about him until he shows up at the end, locked in a small mini um, <laughs> carousel that you could hold your hands with. That's true. <laughs> well, this Geppetto apparently is super popular with everybody in town because he's a toy maker that everyone loves, which is unique to this version because most of the time you have nobody cares about Geppetto. <laughs> And then the, they like his stuff so much that it causes like a Black Friday frenzy. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess that's the only thing these kids have to play with. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing else to buy. <laughs> I guess not. But these kids, they are obviously American kids, even though this is supposed to oh, be yeah, some different. little Italian town called Bellagio. The these kids are American. They sound Hello. American. They act American. Drew Everything Carey's about American. them is they're American to- brats. T- totally agree. <laughs> and I guess we get to the first song, "Toys," which I like this song a lot. Again, from the lyrics point of view, I like there's verses of the kids talking about singing about the you know their wants in terms of toys. There's the verses about the parents of trying to discipline their kids who end up being bratty about which toys they want Mm -hmm. then there's verses from geppetto kind of yearning about how you know everyone else has kids and he's always wanted to be a father but he never had one have kids so i think i think that was a strong song to open with (laughs) the song was where i started feeling like oh no (laughs) but downhill for you (laughs) Three, three like, minutes into the movie and you're like oh god where did i get myself into <laughs> i mean i could tell from the lyrics that this was not an incompetently written song but that's, everyone that's singing <laughs> annoyed me like every child annoyed me geppetto was like he hadn't gotten to the point where he was annoying yet but i could tell something was off in the way he was singing i knew it wasn't perfect but i this is where it started to slide. <laughs> Three minutes, we hit a record. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a 90-minute um, movie. Yeah. I mean, I will say, though, that even though I didn't love this movie, I was never not engaged in some way, whether good or bad. Like, I was never checking out bored, which I suppose is a good Great. thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, any compliment's a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's not a film you can get bored at, nor 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 would do I think it's a film where it's like anyone would find it so bad they're just gonna you know walk away and do something else. I think that this would could be a candidate depending on the person for something that they would call so bad it's good. Okay. I don't know that I would agree with that, but I could definitely see some people enjoying it in that regard just because there's so many bizarre things that happen in this movie so many bizarre choices for actors <laughs> i think one of the things that stood out to me in this scene probably was the fact that everyone had an american accent and like the scene with the kids the there's one kid who wants whatever's under the blanket which turns out to be pinocchio yeah. and then once she's gone Geppetto starts talking to this puppet and singing to it like it's a real kid. And maybe it was Drew Carey, maybe it's the American accent, but I was <laughs> I was like, I feel like I would be feeling different feelings if there was like a European accent here. It would feel more authentic. The fact that it was an American accent just makes it seem like he's a crazy guy singing to this puppet. <laughs> old, old Drew's off again. That's not a good script. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I I went in expecting like the, even the first time I watched this movie I, I wasn't expecting to hear European accents so uh, them them being American accents I it was just like I don't know I just kind of expected it, I guess but but I think you're right like if it was like a sincere uh, um, European accent Italian or non like it probably would have been more sincere but this gets to the next question would you rather <laughs> Drew Carey have had Tom Hanks voice from the 
from the other Pinocchio movie. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can all these questions. We have you have to um, stop and think. <laughs> It's one of those movies, guys. It's uh, you got to stop and really consider your options before you answer anything. I feel like at least Tom Hanks tried. <laughs> like, but I don't know. Maybe if Drew Carey had tried, it would have been even worse. So maybe I should yeah. have wanted to try the accent. <laughs> Ever seen what Drew Carey play foreign film dub on whose line is it anyway? <laughs> it probably would have been like that. <laughs> Yeah, just this this whole song about when he's wishing to be a father and wishing on the star, it just seems, I don't know, it pro- may, I don't know if it was the accent or just Drew Carey, it just felt weird to me. I guess a good question was, like, if, if you had to recast this, and, you know, it couldn't be, like, a big celebrity name, like Dick Van Dyke or something, it has to be someone of, like, Drew Carey someone of a TV film kind of caliber, who would you want to cast as a better? I think I would probably start looking in the UK first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I would go with an American cast. Like, we, we ain't doing this for American cast. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who I would um, pick either. <laughs> for some reason, I kind of want to see Peter Capaldi play Geppetto. <laughs> I was literally thinking of David Tennant, so so so, so we we both went Doctor Who. On this. Apparently, I could I guess I could see David Tennant doing something like this. I think he would sell it better too. Yeah, I think his sincere Scottish accent might that might evoke something. Yeah, but they would need to they would need to play the whole film sincere, and I. Like I said, I cannot figure out if they were trying to make a sincere film because so many times I feel like the music would have been wrong or the music was wrong if they were trying to go sincere because like nothing ever felt like it was a threat. Nothing ever felt like there was any real danger. Even when the kids turned into donkeys, they were still singing that song about Pleasure Island and it didn't feel like, oh no, what's going to happen? It was like, well, they're off to become donkeys. I think it also been a G, I think it got a G rating, so I think that also could have played a part in it. Probably. I mean, and this this is G rating in two thousand, so it's not like you know G rating in nineteen forty two when Bambi's mother gets killed or something. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, Pinocchio is not a story that easily lends itself to a G rating, so they really tamed it down for this. Yeah, there was no hanging. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I've ever seen a version with the hanging in, in it. I haven't yet. I have one more to watch that it is possible because it's an Italian version. I will. I'll let you know when I get there if, if it yeah, turns out to have a hanging. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the blue fairy comes in, but you don't actually see her come in. You see a bunch of sparkles and then Geppetto goes downstairs to find the blue fairy in the middle of bringing Pinocchio to life. And then I remembered, Oh yeah, this is about Geppetto, not Pinocchio. (laughs) Correct. It's Geppetto. the movie. And the first thing I thought when she was talking was like, she is not selling this accent. (laughs) Like, I don't know what, what did the director tell her to do? I don't know. Whatever. The the only thing I can think of is that she's trying to do an impression of the blue fairy from the original Disney film. And she's just not getting it. I wonder if she's trying to do an impression of Julie Andrews since that that's who Oh maybe. Who was supposed to play the character apparently. So maybe that's I think I could see that. Maybe like a fusion between the original and Julie Andrews. Mm -hmm. I feel that makes some sense. We gotta ask her. (laughs) Next time we go to a con, instead of Sign Fail, (laughs) ask her, hey, what were you thinking about with that blue fairy voice? Now I just kind of want them to remake this and actually use Dick Van Dyke and Julie Andrews before it's too late. <laughs> and he's seven-year-old Dick Van Dyke as Geppetto. <laughs> he can't really dance as much as he used to, but he could probably sing something. And Julie Andrews, she can't sing as much either, but she's almost 90. Yeah, that'll be interesting. <laughs> I mean, like I said, this film had so much potential. And with them, I think they could have nailed it. I feel with them, they probably were going to make this a theatrical film. 
It could have been. I can't see them using Dick Van Dyke and Julie Andrews and just putting that on TV. <laughs> uh, oh, no. They shouldn't. They wouldn't have. Yeah. They should not do that. They should not. Listen here, Disney. <laughs> well, yeah, at this point, she's brought him to life. And I was thinking the kid playing Pinocchio is selling his role better than anyone so far. <laughs> I guess that's where we differ. <laughs> <laughs> No offense, kid, if you're watching. Well, he's not a kid anymore, but no offense. <laughs> and that's not to say he was amazing, but I still thought yeah. that he was being, he was more su- sincerely selling his role than Geppetto or the Blue Fairy. <laughs> but the first thing that he does when he's brought to life is just ask a ton of annoying questions. Yeah. And Geppetto wants to go to bed immediately and is already annoyed by Pinocchio. <laughs> and at that point, I started getting annoyed with Geppetto. <laughs> One thing with this Pinocchio is Pinocchio isn't as mis- mischievous as you'd expect. He's more like he's just not a, not annoying in a bad way, but just no. curious about everything, and that's how why he comes off as annoying. Yeah, I think that he they're seems going to be trying to do good a lot of yeah. times, but it just comes off as not. They're they're going more for the Disney Pinocchio than the book Pinocchio with this character, and at this point, I was not like I. I guess I knew that this is about Geppetto, but like I've watched so many Pinocchios now that I'm used to the moral of the story of Pinocchio being Pinocchio needs to learn how to be a good boy. And I was, I guess I was expecting something like that with this movie. I was not expecting Geppetto to have to be the one to learn a lesson. And I was just annoyed at everything Geppetto did because I wasn't expecting him to learn yeah. the error of his ways. Like now that I'm thinking back, I think that I would be a little bit more okay with some of the things that he did because I know that this is all in service of him becoming a better person. Uh-huh. But at this point, when he's getting annoyed by Pinocchio two minutes after Pinocchio has been brought to life, I'm already annoyed at him because he was just wistfully attempting to sing a song about wanting to be a father and now he's annoyed with his own kid <laughs> i guess if if it if it was sincere like you said it um i guess it's trying to, it's the message of you know how you know be careful what you wish for or you don't know what you wish for what you know what what it entails mm-hmm. and be responsible and stuff like that but yeah, it, it was it was interesting how the Pinocchio ended up getting the big bed. <laughs> okay, take the Pinocchio size bed. And again, I think that they thought that was supposed to be funny, but I just was not amused. <laughs> yeah, this was two thousands Disney wonderful weather Disney TV. I guess there was there wasn't a high bar to set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think if I ever seen any other. Like not Disney Channel movies, but like Wonderful Worlds or Disney movies. I don't think I have. I used to watch. Be, oh no, no, Ta- Tower of Terror, lot. right? Tower of Terror was a that was a Disney Channel movie, right? That was a Wonderful Worlds of Disney movie. I don't think I've seen that one. If if it is, then I've seen that, which is probably the best Disney movie based on one of the rides. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you can take it back. I forgot about Pirates number one. <laughs> I was, that. Yeah, I was just gonna say <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean. But yeah, they don't have a great track record with ride-based movies. We'll see if they can break that with the second attempt at Haunted Mansion. Actually, third if you count Muppets Haunted Mansion. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so the next day, there was a bunch of unconvincing dialogue about how grateful Geppetto was to have a son unique in all the world. And not everyone can trace their family tree to a tree. To a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just rolled my eyes at that. I think there was a bunch of things where I just rolled my eyes because it just felt so out of place. Like I'm, I'm used to Pinocchio being a sincere story and they were not doing anything sincere. Like I said, I think I went into this with completely wrong expectations. I I think you did too. (laughs) (laughs) And here's where we get the, uh, the and son song, which again, I, I think is a wonderfully written song just to rhyme, um, addendum and, Endum, as in Enderman, Enderman's name, just to make that rhyme. I think, wow, that that took some doing. (laughs) There was a bunch of that, not just in this song, but throughout the movie. Yeah, throughout the movie, yeah. Like I said, I think that the songs were were written very well. Mm -hmm. Just, they sometimes needed some different performers. 
<laughs> and I like at the end of the song after, well, I guess near that of the song, Pinocchio starts to show interest in not, but Geppetto wants him to be a toy maker like him and his father before him and his father before him, etc. He's like, no, I want to be the guy who drives the train. <laughs> uh-huh. And after he tries to teach him something about toy making and just causing a mess, he's like, you're going to school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of similar to the Zemeckis version. Like after Pinocchio just put something on fire, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Geppetto was like, yeah, you go to school tomorrow. <laughs> I don't even remember how that went in that version because I think I've blocked out that version mostly. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where I don't care to ever watch it again, and my brain is slowly erasing it over with different versions of Pinocchio. <laughs> Have you done the Sandy Duncan Pinocchio? No, I probably won't get to that one in this batch, but I really want to do that one. I haven't seen it before. My phone on YouTube, I really want to check that out, too. Yeah, there's a bunch that I would really like to get to, but mm-hmm. I I don't. I don't want to spend all year on Pinocchio. I've got a whole bunch of other things I want to do. So uh, yeah, you got to. I'll try to get back to Pinocchio as soon as I can because there are so many bizarre versions of Pinocchio that I really want to do, but I just don't have time. That makes sense. One of the ones that I think you and I need to do is the Pinocchio in outer space. I think it's like yeah. an animated one from the seventies. Is it like a rushed one? I don't remember where it's from. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. I just know that from the title, it's probably going to be weird, and it's an animated film, so I was like, yeah, I should do that one with him. <laughs> Reminds me of The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, and the people were like, just that's that title alone. <laughs> <laughs> Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars. I have Which never fun. really thought about the title before, mm-hmm. but yeah, you're right. That is yeah. that is a bizarre title. <laughs> Which is weird, because it's actually based, it's based on a book, like the original Brave Little Toaster store book. There, there was a sequel called Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars. So it's not like Disney invented that name, but still. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely have to do that for the Disney podcast at some point. Oh, I'd, I'd love to join you for one, any of the Brave Little Toasters <laughs> if you need people. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind because I, I definitely watched Brave Little Toaster a lot as a kid. I never saw any of the sequels, so I need to see what I think of uh... them now. I have not watched I have not watched Brave Little Toaster since I was a kid. Probably not since even the age of ten. So it's been a long time. It's been a long time for me too. Probably not that long, but still pretty long, at least ten, fifteen years. That well, that one will be interesting to revisit. <laughs> Sorry, back, back to Pinocchio. <laughs> so yeah, he gets sent off to school. Geppetto just tells him that he needs to do what all the other kids are doing, which he apparently takes far too literally because he's later working and some kids run to tell him that Pinocchio was fighting. He apparently just annoyed everyone by copying what they did until they started beating him up. (laughs) Yeah, one kid in particular, yeah. And that was um, was Anton Yelchin character. Yeah. So he is kicked out of school despite Geppetto's best efforts to flatter the school teacher. That was the character played by Anna Gasteyer. And when they're leaving, she warns him about Pleasure Island, which I thought was weird because, like, do the people in this town know about Pleasure Island and what goes on there? And if so, why don't they shut this down? I mean, to be fair, I don't think I saw uh, any police unit in this town. (laughs) I guess that's true. I (laughs) I guess the way I feel Pleasure Island is on an island somewhere and like i guess the only way you can get to it is via the coast like even if the villagers wanted to shut it down i don't think they would i don't know maybe i guess i guess boats and (laughs) and and land on the island i don't know it just seems like a hard thing to shut down yeah i suppose well maybe they don't really know what goes on there they just know it's it's bad stuff goes on there so whatever i suppose because she doesn't specify she just warns him about it and which i also don't remember, so thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Just for a reference, I rewatched this about maybe three days ago. Just for a reference, I watched this literally right before we did this podcast because I haven't had time all week to get to watch anything. Keep your mind, yeah. 
Are you enjoying this episode of the podcast? Do you want more content for me and my friends on the iHeart Movies Podcast Network? We have exclusive bonus episodes, extended episodes, preview content, and more waiting for you right now on Patreon. Patrons also get the chance to request episodes, so if you want me to cover something I've never done before, sign up and let me know. Through here you also meet Stromboli, who is going around trying to get people to come to his apparently terrible puppet show. And he's played by Brent Spiner, who was Data in Star Trek. Mm. That's a different character. Totally. But apparently he had um he's done like stage musicals before, so he has that experience. Yeah, I'm he got into the role way more than Drew Carey did. <laughs> like he was it felt like he was actually trying to sell this role, even though it was weird. And I I can't say that I loved the character. I mean, you're not supposed to love Stromboli, but like he didn't feel like a bad guy that you it's like deliciously evil or anything. He was just kind of an annoying bad guy. But at least he was selling the role. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not as malicious as like the one in the original Disney film. Yeah, and I think yeah. I wrote that somewhere in my notes. He yeah. doesn't feel dangerous. Whereas Yeah, he's more just we'll get to it later but like he doesn't he doesn't actually like try to kidnap pinocchio or anything he he's more like look i have a contract and you got to give him up <laughs> yeah and even if he did he just doesn't feel like he could do any damage yeah like the original stromboli he was like straight up terrifying yeah this is more just like a somewhat corrupt businessman i guess <laughs> yeah yeah and again i think it it also comes to the music because like there was no scary music in any of this i think that 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 could have helped at least somewhat in some of these scenes it just never felt like there was any sort of a threat happening anytime i think the only thing i one the music i found kind of eerie was the very last line of pleasure island and we get to it when usher just kind of sings that line very, oh yeah very slowly to tomato and then it yeah. cuts but <laughs> it's nice that <laughs> But in terms of Stromboli, he has a song, Bravo Stromboli, which, again, I I love. <laughs> this used to be my favorite song when I first watched it. Now I don't, I don't know what my favorite song is, but I think in this song you could see Brennan Spiner's singing capabilities. He holds some notes for a very long time in mm-hmm. that, movie, that song. Geppetto ends up scolding Pinocchio all the way home. Never really explains why what he did was wrong. Eventually makes him cry. And then tries to bribe him to stop crying, and then just straight up yells at him. And then at that point, I was like, he's a lost cause. I do not care about this Geppetto at all. (laughs) Pinocchio gets sent to his room. He accidentally breaks something. He lies about it, and his nose grows. Geppetto doesn't seem phased by this at all, which I thought was weird. And he yells at him some more. And then Pinocchio tells him that he bet Stromboli wouldn't yell at his son, so he tells him to go live with Stromboli then. And then at some point, his nose just goes back to normal size for no reason, which I thought was weird. Another thing that stood out to me is, like you say, about um, how Drew Carey's not phased by Pinocchio's nose growing. I felt like the villagers, or particularly Stromboli, like the first time he sees Pinocchio, he's like, oh, he's made of wood. Like, it, it doesn't phase him either. But when I'm trying to think of the old Disney movie, like when Honest John sees Pinocchio for the first time, he's kind of taken aback. He's like, wow, a boy made of wood. Like, who'd have thunk? But like this movie, everyone mm-hmm. just kind of, oh, boy made of wood, cool. Yeah, I see you got a son, Geppetto. Yeah, cool. <laughs> this, it, it, it just kind of accepted. That, that reminds me of the Jonathan Taylor Thomas version because mm-hmm. like with that one, I felt... Like, it was weird that people weren't really giving him a second thought. But I think it helped, or maybe hurt, I don't know. The f- The fact that that movie was definitely played straight. It was definitely supposed to be sincere. And I think that that's why I felt it was weird in that one when nobody really seemed phased. Like, I think also maybe they were thinking that he just was a really advanced toy in that one. And with in this the one... John the Taylor Thomas one? Yes. Okay. But with this one, like nothing was sincere, so it didn't stand out to me that nobody thought it was weird that he was a wooden boy. Okay. I think if it had been a sincere movie and people just went with it, I think I would have had more questions about the townspeople. 
So Geppetto ends up leaving Pinocchio alone in his room, and he goes outside to wander the streets calling for the Blue Fairy, saying that she made a mistake and Pinocchio's a big disappointment and not what he wanted at all. And of course, (laughs) Pinocchio hears this from the balcony and runs away from home. Geppetto ends up literally calling for her all day, and she shows up at night, and she's like, kind of clueless telling him there's no need to thank her and she's acting kind of like an airhead but like i don't really know what to think about her character (laughs) she has she has lines that make me think that she's an airhead but also like her point is to teach geppetto how to be a better father like the whole the whole point of this movie is to teach geppetto to be a good father rather than have pinocchio learn to be a good boy Like, she's not, nobody's there for Pinocchio at all. Pinocchio doesn't really learn much of a lesson in the whole movie. The whole whole thing is Geppetto. So that's her point. And at this point, because I didn't realize that, she came off as an airhead. So maybe if I watched it again, she wouldn't, but I don't really know. No, I think she came off as an airhead as well. Because I, even if her point was to teach Geppetto a lesson, I feel she only did that in one scene, which is... The Wayne Brady scene we'll get to. Besides that, I don't think she, I don't think anything else she ever did seem to be something to teach. Carrie, well, this uh, this whole song was, but like the whole point of this song was to teach him that there's no quick fix in parenting, and he needs to just a little work. magic. Yeah, uh, I guess I I looked at it more. It was just like her theme song. <laughs> I mean, it sort of is, but she's yeah. saying to him about he needs to learn how to be a better parent. Mm. Cause, cause this, was, like, this was my least favorite song, so I didn't really pay that much attention to it. <laughs> no, well, like at the end, she tells him that she's not going to fix what's not broken, and basically, he just needs to learn how to be a better parent. But this this song actually had some lyrics that I liked enough to write down and take note of. Okay. When when Drew Carey says, "Don't take this as ingratitude, but you really have an attitude," <laughs> I liked that line. <laughs> So he heads home, and he finds a note from Pinocchio telling him he's going off to Stromboli's. And at this point, again, I'm like, Geppetto's a lost cause, because he thinks that this is for the best. (laughs) It's like, my son ran away from home. Oh, well, maybe it's for the best. (laughs) He's like, he'll be happy, I'll be happy, it's all good. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So he decides if he's going to live with stromboli he'll need his toys so he gathers up some stuff and heads off to his puppet show and this is where you have the most direct reference to the original with pinocchio yeah. saying i've got no strings and everybody loves him you have kids exclaiming about how great he is parents gushing about how great this father and son duo are because they <laughs> think pinocchio is stromboli's son yeah. for some reason <laughs> And then you have a scene where Stromboli has him locked in a cage and yells at him, which is true to the original Disney version, but there's like, like I said, there's no threat here. Like, I did not get any sort of, I don't know, chills like you would. Like, Stromboli in the original version is a scary guy. Like, you would not want to meet this person. This Stromboli is a doofus. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Ben. yeah, I agree. This Stromboli is not... He's not a dangerous villain. Yeah. Menacing villain. But Geppetto wants to talk to Stromboli. He wants to see Pinocchio, wants to give him his toys, but Stromboli tells him that Pinocchio was only there for one show. He went off to make a name for himself in the next city. Yeah. So he sends Geppetto off in the wrong direction and then goes back to Pinocchio, only to find out that he's escaped somehow. And then he has this telescope and he sees Pinocchio running across a field after the stagecoach to Pleasure (laughs) Island. So like we're really getting through this story quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that until you mentioned it. <laughs> so he's freaking out. He starts blaming his puppets. And this is where I'm like, this guy is a little off his rocker. He's like arguing with his puppets, telling him that they should have been watching Pinocchio. He's like abusing them. And then he's singing this song as he's packing to go after the coach. And the puppets, yeah, this is what Bravo is. Yeah. The, the puppets are like coming to life. So I think that he's just supposed to be crazy. <laughs> I think half of this is happening in his imagination. It's like Quasimodo and the, the gargoyles, maybe. 
I haven't actually seen that one yet. Is that what happens? Are the gargoyles not alive? I oh, thought yeah, they were. Much. Okay, I shouldn't say anything. But <laughs> there, there's a big there's a big debate about whether or not the gargoyles are alive in Disney's Hunchback, or or are they figments of Quasimodo's imagination? Okay, I mean, well, that's, that's from, like from a... this from, from the studio point perspective, they're they're alive, but okay, are they? <laughs> the Hunchback of Notre Dame is one of like five movies that I have or have not seen okay. until that I've just been saving them until I get to them in the podcast. Cause I was okay, okay. like, at one point I was planning on watching them, but then once I started the Disney podcast, I was like, I should yeah, just, just wait, wait and yeah. watch them before I do the podcast episodes on them. What are the other four? Home on the range. Ah. The 2011 Winnie the Pooh. Okay. Black Cauldron. Oh, okay. I might have seen the others because I know that I hadn't seen all of the package films before I watched them. Mm-hmm. Like I'd seen parts not, not of them. Yeah. So I think that might've been it. So I think there's okay. four left. Interesting. I'd have to go through the list to make sure, but I think it's just those four left now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So while Stromboli is apparently going crazy, Geppetto is searching for Pinocchio and he runs into the blue fairy again. And he blames everything on Pinocchio, says it's his fault for not wanting to get into the family business. Yeah. And <laughs> says something like that he should want to be like me. She says, why? Because you're such a prize. She says, well, I'm yeah. not talking to you anymore. <laughs> I remember that line. That was funny. So there's a reprise of Just Because It's Magic. And Again. this is where I was starting to get confused as to what exactly was going on, because... She says something like he he needs more magic, and then she sends like this stream of sparkles out in front of him. And I wasn't really sure what happened, but after this, he runs into Lazarno, who is played oh. by Wayne Brady, and he's a terrible magician who has accidentally tied himself up. So Geppetto helps set him free, and then he starts doing a bunch of terrible tricks, almost sets him on fire, almost shoots him with an arrow, <laughs> and he has this conversation where Geppetto learns that he likes making toys. And he thinks that he should be a great toy maker instead of doing all these terrible tricks. But apparently his dad wants him to be a magician, so he has to do that so he doesn't disappoint his father. Which, of course, this is all way too on the nose. And you later find out that the Blue Fairy must have put him up to this. I'm not sure if she magicked him into doing this or what. Like but now, now, now that you mention about her you know, sending the magic sparkle down the road... Now I'm probably leaning towards he might have been conjured up. Yeah, I don't know, because then you, they have a little scene together after Geppetto's gone off to tell yeah. Pinocchio it doesn't have to be a toy maker anymore. And he says something like, did I do a good job or something to her? So, I don't know. And they get a toys reprise because you can't have Wayne Brady and not have him singing. <laughs> yes. Which is, again, as a Who's Life fan, it's so weird to see Drew Carey and Wayne Brady together, and it's not Who's Line. It felt like they wanted it to be some sort of a Who's Line reunion, but then, like, why is it only them? You couldn't get the other seven. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Stiles was busy. You call him African. <laughs> they needed the other guys. I guess that's my question. Why, um, what made Drew Carey, what made the set of Drew Carey to play Japan? The only thing I could think of is just because ABC was where the Drew Carey show was on already, so I don't know. And I think it was, I, it was on I, ABC as well. Uh, probably. That's the only thing I can think I mean, of. They I mean, to corporate I can't, synergy. <laughs> I, I can't hear, I can't picture anyone saying, you know, Drew Carey, he, he put it in the best audition tape. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Like, even if, I don't think he would have won this with an audition. <laughs> Yeah, it had to have been a corporate synergy thing. Mm-hmm. And after this, you get a really bizarre scene. <laughs> like, I get that the point of this is to teach him that Pinocchio shouldn't just be the perfect child and do whatever he says, but this scene is bizarre. <laughs> oh, is this uh, the city of Idila or whatever? I didn't even remember that it had a name, but yeah, yeah, it's a bunch of so <laughs> Okay. With Professor Juan Ragazzo. Maybe Rene Aubergenois. Or Aubergenois, I don't know. I'm sure it's Aubergenois. 
I don't think it's arbitrariness or whatever. <laughs> I feel like if you said that to a French person, they would hate you. <laughs> I'm Mr. Reen Arbitrariness. <laughs> and I'm just banned from France. <laughs> they would riot in the street. <laughs> Got be canceled after that. <laughs> So yeah, there's this town full of perfectly behaved children who are apparently all created by this Professor Bon Ragazzo. He has this machine that he like pulls a bunch of levers that mean different things and you get a child exactly to your specifications. Mm-hmm. And it is bizarre. Like, <laughs> I don't know why, like, it, this is not the same thing at all. But I, for some reason, this whole scene reminded me of the scene from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang with the child snatcher. Like, this is not the same character, not the same vibe, but I, there was just something about this whole scene that reminded me of that. <laughs> it it also like, reminded me of the Stepford Wives, except kids. <laughs> well, I get that thematically. I guess Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, it's like, like you say, that, that contraption with the levers and all that, it just kind of reminds... It's it's kind of, it does I don't know there's something about like the child catcher's carriage and whatnot yeah it's all I don't know. kind of similar but. everything about this scene made me think that in any other context this would be a horror movie <laughs> this would be an episode of the Twilight Zone <laughs> this is like incredibly sinister except everyone's singing a cheery tune <laughs> yeah so he gets a song um satisfaction guaranteed again another one that i love and i was watching it on youtube and like a lot of the comments are like you know the older i get the creepier the scenes <laughs> seems <laughs> I, I guess for me it i guess for me it hasn't I, it hasn't gotten the creepy part yet i guess i don't know because maybe just because of the vibes of the movie at the time and I don't think you're supposed to get creepy vibes from it. I think that they really thought that this was a fun scene and -hmm. that this guy was a kooky character who made cute, perfect kids. I don't think that they intended this to be creepy, but I thought it was creepy. You're not alone, yeah. (laughs) But it's like, if this movie came out now, like with how like AI is getting or has gotten already and with just how much robotics and uh, AI is right now, like this, I don't know if this would be a scarier scene because of how real it could possibly be. Were these kids robots? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I, I guess the professor. I looked at him like an inventor because he 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 talks to Geppetto. He says inventor to inventor. So he's creating them out of he's inventing them out of something. So I, I guess I took it that he invented this machine, but I thought that there was something sciencey going on, and these kids were like so clones actually human, or something. Human beings. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think they knew either. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> But the song's catchy though, which I get is and has another another amazing like, just I just love the lyrics in this song. I mean, everything about this scene could be amazing, except I just got creepy vibes from it. Like the whole the dance the dance in the streets, they, that was really well done. They had a lot of good dancers, like a, a lot of good child dancers too. Yeah, yeah. It's just the implications more than anything is what I found off putting. <laughs> And I think I think Geppetto agreed because by the end of the song oh, yeah, he's he fleeing in terror. <laughs> and the other guy's like, uh, <laughs> "Senor Geppetto, hello." <laughs> he's like, "No one's ever ran away from my offer before," <laughs> which is scary too because somewhere there's there's that village of idea that's still going <laughs> in this Pinocchio universe, probably. I mean, if they didn't shut down Pleasure Island, why would they shut this one down? That's true. So once Geppetto has gotten out of there, the Blue Fairy appears again, who it seems like she really wants to say, I told you so. But she's also there to point him towards Pleasure Island. She shows him, I was going to say she shows him a video, but it's not a video. It's like a magic portal thing. (laughs) We didn't have any fancy iPhones back then. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, she shows him Stromboli talking about chaining up Pinocchio and points him in the direction of Pleasure Island because he was going in the wrong direction. But again, it, it just reminds me, like, so Drew Carey, uh, Drew, uh, Geppetto has been walking for so long <laughs> in this direction, <laughs> looking for <laughs> Pinocchio, and it's just been the wrong direction the whole time. Apparently. Yeah. And this is where you get Pleasure Island with the coachman character, or I guess in this version is the ringmaster, played by Usher. Some reason. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird choice. But, I mean, there were so many weird choices in this movie. This doesn't seem like one of the worst ones, so we'll go with it. <laughs> this this whole scene is like one big music video for him because he's got his backup dancers. Yeah. They're singing about Pleasure Island. All the kids are going crazy while he's singing about all the stuff that they can do and not do. I love the lyrics, too, in this one. Yeah, the lyrics on pretty much all the songs were good. Yeah. Like I said, it's... <laughs> The, the the writing wasn't the problem. <laughs> Performing. Yeah, and even though I wouldn't say that this is bad, but I still feel like, like, why Usher? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Like, like, it's not bad, but it's just... This is why, yeah. Bizarre. Like, yeah, you and me aren't that big on Usher, but so the only thing we could think of is... Was he just... Did he just have a very popular song in 2000? <laughs> he might have. I mean, maybe he had some sort of deal with ABC and it was more corporate synergy. Who knows? Corporate synergy, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Geppetto finds Pinocchio here, but he doesn't want anything to do with him because of what he'd overheard earlier. Yeah. And Stromboli also finds him, but he gets ejected by a bunch of stilt walker clowns. I feel like that could cause some fears for people who already hate clowns. <laughs> They're clowns, yeah. but taller. Tall, towering clowns that... <laughs> they could that... pick you up like a little doll. <laughs> Run after you and toss you out. <laughs> and Geppetto tries to get Pinocchio here, but Pinocchio yells that a parent is here so that he gets chased out as well. And then you have... Like, I'm wondering if somebody watched the Jonathan Taylor Thomas version and ripped it off for this scene. I guess that goes against my theory of the... The villagers can't go to Pleasure Island because Drew Car- Geppetto <laughs> just walked right up, as did Stromboli. So, that yeah. was my my theory. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas's version had a Pleasure Island scene like this. Well, in the Jonathan Taylor Thomas version, the donkey transformation happens on a roller coaster. Like it's different than this because they go under a waterfall, and the waterfall, the water in the waterfall, is magic, and that's what changes them. But I thought it was weird that they had the donkey transformation happen via roller coaster, like in the John of the Taylor Thomas version. It was like, did somebody see this a few years earlier and were like, yeah, let's just take that idea. I didn't even notice that it was via roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened, because they were talking about the kids needing to go on the roller coaster. And then oh. as soon as Pinocchio gets on and starts going through the door, he turns into a donkey. Oh, that's 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 small roller coaster. Thing. Okay, I guess I looked at I call that more of a ride. I didn't think it was a roller coaster. Well, they called it a roller coaster, but okay. I also thought it was weird that they were calling yeah. it a roller coaster <laughs> because it it's not like a normal roller coaster. Yeah, it's like one of those carnival ones. Yeah, mm. and then at this point, everything turns into paintings because they didn't have a budget. Yes. Okay, <laughs> the, the, this is what I was referring to in the beginning when I said there's only one part about this movie I like. I, which is now either a they ran out of a budget b they ran out of time c they ran out of the, the writers didn't know what to write or d they just didn't care anymore or e uh, <laughs> a, a collection of all all what happened all of all of, all of the above but yes they, they this is where geppetto is supposed to get eaten by monstro the the the, the whale or fish or whatever and it's just paintings because they, they clearly couldn't you know create that that <laughs> scene so we're just told that he does that and then secondly Pinocchio gets swallowed up and not only is he not a donkey anymore he's like what happened oh you know that the, the, it just washed off <laughs> <laughs> like, like even Zemeckis' version I don't think that's how Pinocchio lost his donkey ears or whatever <laughs> I was really hoping that they were going for a book accurate version, but then that wouldn't be rated G anymore. (laughs) (laughs) It's 
So yes, mm-hmm. this is the one, this is where I agree with you. It's like, I don't know what happened in this last the, this five minutes. Like they just they just gave up. I don't know. <laughs> it does. It really does seem like that. It's like they ran out of time or money or something, and yes. we're like, we got to get this done fast, quick. Somebody do a bunch of drawings. We get, we get this over with. <laughs> How are we gonna explain Pinocchio losing the the donkey? I don't know. It, it washed Say it off. washed okay, away. <laughs> They'll believe that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this that, this whole thing was just weird. Yes. <laughs> this is yeah. This was the hands down the worst part of the movie. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and then you you've got them escaping, which they don't spend much time in the stomach either. And again, they don't show them escaping. They, like. Like, no. like that the aftermath of them escaping. They just they just walk forward, I guess, and that's it. <laughs> the the only the only budget they had left was to build the the inside of the whale's mouth. They inside couldn't build the rest of the whale. That was just way too much for a TV budget. <laughs> a roller coaster's fine, but this Well, this, they didn't yeah, even really build a full roller coaster, <laughs> but they had the little carts. And That's then they true. go through the little door, and you don't see any of the rest of the roller coaster. So that is true. They were really trying to get by as cheaply as possible. Like who watches Geppetto for the the big fish at the end? Well, I was. <laughs> like that's one of the iconic things about Pinocchio is the sea monster part. Whether it's a sea monster Geppetto. or a whale or a shark or a fish, depending on Dog what version you're whatever, watching, yeah. mm-hmm. like the the big thing in the sea is what people <laughs> wait for. And in this, it was reduced to a single painting. <laughs> yes, a little drawing here, and that was it. But they got out of it. He used his uh, he told a lie and made his nose grow. That helped, which reminded me of both the Emperor of the Night version that we saw, as well as I can't remember if it was the Zemeckis version or the Guillermo del Toro. One of those two, I think they did this as well. I think a lot of versions do something similar. Oh, Not okay. exactly this. <laughs> like, it it sort of happens this way in the Guillermo del Toro one, but not exactly at all. They use his nose and then they break it off so that they can climb out through the blowhole. Oh, okay. They, like, That's make a bridge out of his nose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this, they just tickle his uvula and get coughed out. <laughs> there's also, before they get coughed out, there's there's a line in here that made me go, what? Because up until this point, as far as I know, like I, not that I was listening for it or anything, Pinocchio has not expressed any desire to be a real boy. But in the whale, <laughs> once he finds him like half drowned, having just have, had his donkey parts washed away... <laughs> He he says, I tried to do everything you wanted me to do. I guess I'll never be a real boy now. And I was like, what? Since when did this version of Pinocchio want to be a real boy? Did they just throw that in there because that's where the story has to go? Like, that was never a consideration before. That's true. I never realized that either. But yeah, they probably just did that as a wink to the original Disney version. (laughs) Well, probably plus they've got to get there eventually because that's what has to happen at the end but it's like we're like five minutes away from the end and he's just now saying that he wants to be a real boy it's not five minutes like... we still got we still got one more song <laughs> okay maybe 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> but like it still seems a little late in the game for him to just now express the wish to be real that's true i guess it's like i don't know Cinderella in the last 10 minutes she wants to go to the ball <laughs> <laughs> I don't know but yeah they escape they go back home I don't know how far away they are but they walk back home apparently the same night and Geppetto basically says you're the best son a father could ever want even though I'm still made of wood and he basically just tells him the only thing that matters is what's on the inside and then there's like a twist ending because Stromboli is waiting for them at home. At this point, I was like, why has Stromboli been a main character for this whole movie? He's literally done nothing. And then I was like, oh, apparently they wanted to save him for a twist ending. I mean, it's a kind of a weak twist, but still. <laughs> I guess I didn't even ex- I didn't even consider it a twist ending, but it was just... Well, like, like, they just... usually the story gets rid of 
like in most in most stories it's not Strumble. Emmanuel <clears throat> Woko is the name of the character in most stories. Okay. But usually he's gotten rid of long before the end. Mm. He's not somebody who sticks around towards the end. So I just thought it was weird that he stuck around long enough and now he wants Pinocchio back. Yet we never see Usher again. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) that's kind of true to most stories where the coachman gets away with everything. So he's still off turning kids into donkeys. So yeah, he's refusing to leave without Pinocchio. Geppetto then offers him everything he owns, which he sort of considers. And then they have this schmaltzy song about not wanting to give up his son. (laughs) This is probably my second least favorite song. At this point, I was just like, what is going on with this movie? (laughs) And then Strawbully just basically straight up tries to kidnap him. When Geppetto starts calling for the Blue Fairy, who this time appears immediately, but tells him that she can't do anything for him because he wasn't listening to her up until now, so whatever. (laughs) And then Stromboli laughs at him and says even the fairy's on his side. And then she, like, flicks sparkles in his eyes. It's like, what is this movie? She she says, just because you have a contract doesn't mean I have to like you. And then she disappears. (laughs) Contracting reminded me of Peach Dragon, <laughs> the, the foster family of yeah. the main character. Like we got a con- we got a bill of sale right here. <laughs> <laughs> I think they use that as kind of a plot point in a lot of kids' movies. But Geppetto yells after she's disappeared. If you have one ounce of kindness left in you, you'll grant me one last wish. <laughs> and then he's singing a song talking about if she's not going to give him the sun back, he wants to be turned into stone or wood or clay or something. And so she comes back and then just turns Pinocchio into a real boy with a weird cartwheeling special effect that was really dumb. <laughs> and again, I was just like, what is this movie? <laughs> hey, they, they didn't have the budget, remember? We couldn't even get the fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they spent all the special effects on this scene. <laughs> the <wheel> took a lot. <laughs> so now because Pinocchio's real Stromboli doesn't want him anymore. So she just starts zapping him with sparkles and runs him off. And then she says, what good would it have done to make Pinocchio a real boy if he didn't have a real father to come home to? And then they run to each other and hug and start spinning in the street, and the whole town comes out to sing with them. And then they go back home, and the sign above his shop magically changes to Geppetto and Son. The end. The end. (laughs) That was Geppetto. (laughs) (laughs) That was a weird movie. Granted, I'm sure there are much weirder ones, but up until this point, this one was just bizarre. I guess this is not this is not as bizarre as the direct video sequel to the Jonathan Taylor Thomas one. Oh, I which, didn't know they had one. Uh, I didn't either until I started until I was going to do the Jonathan Taylor Thomas version, and discovered wait what they did a sequel. Okay, we've got to do this now. <laughs> that one was probably the weirdest one I've seen so far. Although yeah. I would have to say I probably would watch it before this one because it was just. It was all over the place, bizarre. Okay, like really bizarre. I think if you go into this movie with the with the right mindset, you have to go in with this as this is a television film. This yeah. is a film where Drew Carey is the star. <laughs> this is a film where you're not going to be very a hundred percent true to the Pinocchio story at all. <laughs> and <laughs> this is a film where the music lyrics are the best thing of the movie. I think if you go in with those those um, preconceptions... Go in with the lowest expectations possible and you won't be disappointed. <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, again, I, I like this movie a lot more than you, you do, but I, I would definitely recommend this over Zemeckis' version without... Any yeah, hesitation. well, now that, now that I've thought about it, now that we've talked about it, I think I will probably have... It will be elevated somewhat... <laughs> But rose, like well, the first time I watched it, <laughs> the first time I watched it, not knowing what I was getting into, I was just like, "What?" Oh yeah, what? you watched you watched them twice. I forgot. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> well, this is going to be a fun episode for our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> what is the episode that we've done where you liked it? Have we done one where you liked the movie and I didn't? I don't know. I don't think we have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad it turned out that you liked this one because it made it a lot more interesting than just two people <laughs> talking Bashing about how it, much yeah. they hated it. <laughs> it's like, you know, like the Scrooge Christmas Carol one. We did the animated one. Like we, that one we both thought was just weird. So we had a lot to say and compare about that one. Yeah. I mean, it definitely makes it better to talk about when you have things to yeah. criticize especially things that are as bizarre as a lot of things in this movie was like i definitely will not call this a boring movie no it's, yeah it's not a boring movie i'm hesitant to say i want them to do a, a remake of this movie i i already was thinking to myself i want a remake yeah. <laughs> i yeah. want somebody to do this one well because yeah. like i said at the beginning this had potential like i think that the the lyrics the the mu- the musical part of this yeah could have been great and knowing that it could have been a Dick Van Dyke Julie Andrews musical <laughs> makes me wish for that like oh what could have been well Dick Van Dyke is going to star in Days of Our Lives soon so yeah he's still acting let's let's get him out <laughs> for this that just seems very sad to me for some reason yes. <laughs> In his defense, he asked for a part on the show. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess if it's something he wants to do and not something he's doing because nobody else will give him a role. Like if he's, he a, if he's a Days of Our Life fan, Days of Our Lives fan, then sure, let him do one of his dream roles. <laughs> and he's, like never a done a so, he's never done a soap opera before, so I think he wants to do one. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta add that to the resume. Update his LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Extend his IMDb page. <laughs> yeah, that was Geppetto. A oh, very Geppetto. strange movie. You would you have watched this had we not done it for the podcast? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would I like it wasn't it wasn't even a movie that I'd really even I mean I sort of knew it existed. Yeah. But if I hadn't have been looking for versions of Pinocchio to do, I don't think it would have even come across my radar as something to watch. But because you mentioned it, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that does exist. And it's Disney. And I've already done the other Disney ones. So we should probably do this, too. (laughs) I like to um, see a Drew Carey interview about this movie. So (laughs) I've I've never seen him talk about this movie, like, besides on Who's Line. (laughs) I I want to know how this movie came to be. I want some behind the scenes info. I want to. A behind the scenes documentary or something <laughs> i guess would you say like the soundtrack to this film like on cd you you would recommend people buy that not to this movie not to this movie okay <laughs> maybe if they have like it's been made into a stage musical if they have like a cast recording of the stage musical oh, because i can imagine singers, that that yeah. one would be mm-hmm. a lot better than this mm-hmm. the pinocchio but, my son a cast recording <laughs> like Drew Carey did his best, but he's not a singer. He did fine. He it was passable, but I would not choose to listen to him at my leisure. <laughs> he shouldn't quit his day job. Yeah, I mean he has a pretty cushy day job. He can keep That's on <laughs> giving away money, making people spin the prize wheel. He's joined the game show host. Well. <laughs> A legit game show host. Okay, well, any final thoughts before we call this one good? I guess I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll be the only one to call it good. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I just liked it. And I would definitely recommend everyone check it out just, just so you could get your opinion on it. Because even if you don't like it, you're going to have a very interesting <laughs> uh, um What's the word? N- non-boring opinions on this. <laughs> I mean, if you if people are listening to this podcast, I would assume that they are like me in that they like watching 
different versions of the same story. So yeah. if that is the case, I would definitely say watch this one because it's definitely an interesting take on the Pinocchio story. Yep. And even though I didn't love it, I'm still glad I watched it. Like, I have no regrets about watching pretty much any version that I talk about on the podcast. So I'm glad I watched it. I probably won't rewatch it again, but I'm glad I watched it this time. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Okay, well, until next time, do you want to let people know where they can find you if they want more from you? Yeah, sure. Um, you won't find this on any of my blogs because it doesn't meet the criteria for any of them, but um, I have two blogs, The Animation Combination at theanimationcombination.com where I put like animated film uh, reviews and uh, top 13 list and also host my own Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Animation Edition game show. And I have another blog, my live action Disney project at my live action Disney project.com where I try to watch and review every theatrically released uh, Disney live action Disney film ever made. So check them out. Thanks. You could do this one as a bonus review. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got too much more <laughs> stuff <laughs> to get through. We don't got time for bonuses yet. <laughs> Okay, well, until next time. Thanks for listening to Every Version Ever. If you like what you've heard, make sure to subscribe on your preferred podcast platform or to our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow my co-hosts as well, and if you want more content from us, check out one of the other podcasts in the I Heart Movies Podcast Network, or check out my brand new Patreon. My link tree, as well as any other relevant links, will be in the description. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode, so thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.